addition and subtraction of decimals. We're going to use this sample problem here as we go through the steps for adding and subtracting decimals and work with this sample problem over here. So just as you would do with whole numbers, you're going to rewrite the problem so that decimals are aligned vertically. And the way to do that is to just by lining up your decimals in a straight line. If you do that, then your ones place will, your, your numbers in the ones place will be lined up, your numbers in the tens place, hundreds place, and so on. So make sure that you put the decimals right on top of each other. Add extra zeros if needed so that both numbers have the same number of digits behind the decimal. So in this example, we need to do that. We need to add an extra zero here because 7 tenths is the same as 70 hundredths. That way we have digits to add in every column. Um, we want to make sure that they have the same number of digits behind the decimal. So since this number had the most with two digits behind the decimal, I want two digits here in the first number. Then I'm going to just add or subtract as usual. You can see that's already been done. 0 plus 1 is 1. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry that 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. Plus 3 is 8. Then I'm going to bring the decimal straight down. So I'm going to just move my decimal straight down in a line and then get rid of extra zeros if needed. So I have an example here where that happened. Um, I added these two decimals here and got 10 and 0 thousandths. Well, it ends up that we don't need any of these zeros, nor do we need the decimal point. So we're gonna, I'm going to teach you in a second ways that rules that you can use to know just how much you can erase from a decimal. I have a song that I like to sing when I think about adding or subtracting decimals. My song is written for to say add, but you could always you could also use the exact same method for subtract. So this song is going to also introduce you to Decimal Dog, and here's a picture of him right here eating a bunch of zeros. And on the next slide, we'll learn exactly the rules that Decimal Dog follows in order to um, eat and spit out zeros. The important thing that we've already learned is that when you um, add and subtract decimals, you want to make sure that your decimals are lined up straight. So my song goes like this. When you add, you must line up your decimals in a straight line. Ba -dum, boom, boom. When you add, you must line up your decimals in a straight line. Ba -dum, boom, boom. When you add, you must line up your decimals. And if you are without, ba -dum, boom. ask Decimal Dog boom, to spit boom, one out. Ah, ah, ah. That's my favorite part. I love it. So let's talk about um, what exactly Decimal Dog can do on the next slide. Here are his rules. Decimal Dog can spit out zeros at the end of a number after the decimal point. So Decimal Dog can't do anything to the whole number, but if you're after the decimal point and all the way at the end of the number, Decimal Dog can spit out a zero. So 2 and 4 tenths is the same as 2 and 40 hundredths. That's true because here are 4 tenths and each one of them is worth 10 hundredths. That would be 40 hundredths. He could even spit out another zero and that's the same as 400 thousandths. Decimal dog can spit out a decimal point and or zeros after a whole number. So in this problem here, let's say you had $4 and you spent $3.71 in order to do this subtraction problem, you would ask Decimal Dog to spit out a zero after that whole number, I mean spit out a decimal, and then spit out zeros so that you have the same number of digits behind the decimal point. Then you could go ahead and subtract like normal. And that would be a 10, 9, and you'd have 27 cent, 29 cents left. Moving right to left, so we're going to go this way. He can eat zeros after the decimal, but he has to stop when he gets to a digit other than zero. So looking at this number, 4 and 970 thousandths, he's going to start eating those zeros um, right to left, and he can eat this zero, but when he gets here to this 7, he has to stop. He can't eat any digits other than zero. On this one, 5 and 30 thousandths, He's going to go right to left and he can eat this zero and he has to stop. You might want to be tempted to have him skip over that three and eat the zero, but this three sort of blocks him from getting to this zero right here, which makes sense, right? Because this is five dollars and three cents. 
We couldn't take away that z zero and make it all of a sudden five dollars and three tenths, which is five dollars and thirty cents. They're just not the same. So decimal dog is blocked by any numbers other than zero from going any further. And here's another example, four and six hundredths. He can't eat this zero because he hits this six before he ever gets there. So this number is as simple as it could be. If there are only zeros after the decimal, he can also eat the decimal. So he eats zeros, but he eats decimals too. So he can right to left, chomp it up, chomp it up, chomp it up. He can eat that, z that decimal too. Um, so that's just 37. You never want to leave a number with a decimal and nothing after it. So just go ahead and eat it up. Have to let, that, to let decimal dog do his job. He can't eat any part of a whole number. That's really important. Decimal dog can't change a whole number at all. So in this case, this is, looks like $100, right? Decimal dog can eat the zero, eat the zero, eat the decimal. But of course he can't eat the, um, another zero because that would change $100 into $10. Don't want to do that. Let's look at a few rules. I mean, sorry, let's look at an example uh, and that uses what we've learned so far. So let's uh, pretend that you want to buy a book for your dad, then maybe you're buying Christmas presents, and you want to buy a birdhouse for your mom, and you have already saved up $6, $16.28. And the question is, how much more do you need to save in order to be able to buy these presents? So we've done this problem here, and let's walk through the steps of what's happened. We added up the price of what you need, what you were going to spend on your dad and what you're going to spend on your mom. So 35 and 92 hundredths or $35.92 plus $52.08. And when I added those up, I got $88. So this is the total price of what you need to save. Then you can take away from that what you've already um, saved. And I have $88. And if you had had decimal dog <coughs> if Decimal Dog had eaten these zeros and decimals, you would have still wanted to spit it back out over here because you need those zeros in order to be able to subtract. So we borrowed from the ones place and turned that into 10 dimes. And then we borrowed one of those dimes and turned it into 10 pennies. 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 2 is 7. 7 minus 6 is 1. 8 minus 1 is 7. So you need to save $71.72. Now always, when you do a multi-step problem like this, you should go back and double check that your answer was reasonable. So I've done that here. I rounded this to a number that was easy to work with. So this is um, close to $35. $35 is, a, is, is an easy number to work with. This was about $50. I went ahead and rounded that to $50. So that when I added, it made an easy number to work with of $85. It's about your um, goal that you need to save. And look, that's close to what we got here that we needed to save. Then I'm going to think about, is there a number that I can turn this into that's compatible, that's easy to subtract? Well, this is kind of close to 15, which would be nice because then I have these two fives on, in the ones place. So I rounded this to about $15. 85 minus $15 would be $70 needing to save up which is really close to $71.72. So you, using some estimations, some mental math, tells me that my answer here is li likely correct.